100 colors, 100 beautiful colors, every color of the rainbow, added into one big pot and poured onto the canvas. Today we are doing an in the pot swirl technique that just may shock you when you see the final result. Want to learn acrylic pouring? Come take a class with me. Connecticut and Jacksonville, Florida classes are now forming. Learn everything you need to know to become a proficient acrylic pour artist. Learn how to use a blow dryer properly. Learn how to thin down acrylic paint for all acrylic pouring techniques. Learn the bloom technique, one of the hardest techniques out there. It's all included, my friend. So reserve your spot today by emailing artbytammy at yahoo.com. I hope to see you there. Ho, 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 it's Secret Santa time, my friends. Make sure you stay to the end of the video for your chance to win a free painting from a Secret Santa. Today's the day you finally say Tammy has lost her mind. Well, let me take that back. You may have been saying that all along. <laughs> I have here in front of you 100 colors. That's right. 100 colors. And my bright idea for today is we are going to take all 100 colors. We are going to put them all in a huge bucket. And we are going to pour and we are going to find out will they turn to mud? I mean, I got browns, I got greens, I got orange, most definitely mud makers. Can I get this to come out and without any muddy streaks and somewhat look like a decent painting? Well, only time will tell. All 100 colors I mixed yesterday. All day long I mixed paint. Every paint is mixed exactly the same way. One part paint to three parts American Floetrol. I did not use water for any of them because I want a nice thick consistency to do the technique I'm going to be doing. But here's the thing, there's still a lot of work ahead. I need to put all of these colors into little individual cups and here is why. I wanna make sure I have the same amount of color for each in my pour. So I got these little um, shot cups from the Dollar Tree that you know, I'm covered in paint that I uh, reuse. I love those little cups. So I'm gonna put out 100 of those and I'm gonna give a nice gen generous squirt into each of them. And then I'm going to take a technique known in the soap world called and in the pot swirl, and we're gonna incorporate it into the fluid art world. Since I've been showing you guys my soap, I've gotten such amazing feedback. So I said, hey, let me start incorporating some of those techniques because believe it or not, that is a form of fluid art itself, soap making. But let me take some of those techniques and incorporate them into acrylic pouring. So today's technique is called an in the pot swirl. So let me get set up and we will get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my little cups and squeeze in about an ounce of each color. Again, these paints are, were all mixed the same with one part paint, three parts Floetrol, no water. They are about a number two on the consistency chart. So I've been thinking lately, you know, getting back into the soap making thing, I've been, you know, just thinking about different techniques that I could try in fluid art. And this is just the first one of a few that I'm going to be trying over the next few weeks. And I knew I was going to use a lot of paint for this using 100 colors. So I made sure to put down a, t a clean tablecloth underneath my paintings so that I could, at the end, scoop it all up and get it back into a bucket so I could, you know, recycle that paint that comes off of the canvas. 
because there was a lot. I could have gotten away with half of the amount that I'm putting in these cups, but um, you you know, it was the first time trying it. So I just went with what I thought I would need. It was just way too much. But again, I ended up scooping it up and was able to save a lot of the overflow. So this is what 100 cups of paint looks like. It was actually really pretty to look at. So for my white today, it's mixed the same way as the colors. One part paint, three parts Floetrol. And this is the consistency that it is. I wanted to show you that. Just so you had some kind of an idea of what the paint thickness looked like. So an in the pot swirl, these are Dollar Tree buckets that I get for my actual soap making. But when you're using this technique for soap, what you're doing is you're putting your your lightest batter in the bowl, and then you're pouring all of your colors in. Today, we're using paint. So we have the white paint going in first, and then I start adding all of the color. Now, you can see I'm kind of taking my time and trying to separate the blues from the oranges. And let me tell you something, that didn't last long. <laughs> 100 cups of paint, I was sitting there thinking to myself, you have got to be out of your mind. My arm was so tired from dumping in all of these colors that now what you're seeing is me saying, screw it. The purple can go next to the green. I don't care <laughs> if it makes mud. I just got to get this done. But you're going to see when I pour these colors out, they really, really did well. I don't know if I got lucky or what it was, but now I'm pouring double fisted, as you can see. I just, I had to get towards the finish line here. Now, typically adding brown next to pink or green, it's not going to be a pretty painting, but it, it did well. Again, I'm, I was just shocked with the outcome. Now, when I use this technique for soap making, I obviously don't use 100 colors. This was just some harebrained idea that I got. So now I added a little more white in and then I stuck my spoon in and gave it a nice little in the pot swirl. And I'll tell you what, this spoon looked so pretty. I wish I could have saved it and left it on there. Look at that, how pretty it is. Okay, I had to put two big canvases out here because that bucket of paint is so big. I probably should have used less of each color. I thought I was using, you know, a tiny amount, but wow, I have a lot, a lot of paint. So, I mean, what could possibly go wrong here, right? <laughs> A big bucket of paint I can't even pick up. This is going to be a lot of fun. So as you saw there, as I was pouring in paint, I started off very patiently. And then it was like, nah, let's just dump it all in. <laughs> I'll tell you what. It's a lot of work to dump 100 cups of paint into a bucket. I was out of breath. I mean, look at this. This is huge. <laughs> and all the white is at the bottom. So this is definitely going to be interesting. What I'm going to do, though, is I am going to do like a few splashes to get some of this paint out of this bucket. So it's more manageable for me. Anyway, wish me luck. Ah, I wonder, will we make mud? So far, it's looking okay. And once the white starts to come out, we'll be in even better shape. Let's go. Whoop. like that. That was fun. And you have to see these pretty colors. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And I apologize for the white light. It's just going to be a pain, but 
So in soap making, this technique is called in the pot swirl. And at the end of this video, you're going to see a soap that I made exactly the same way, except not 100 colors. But look at how beautiful these colors are. I can't wait to move this around. Sometimes I just wish that you could just leave it right there, you know, and not have to go any further. But <laughs> let's continue on here. I'll tell you one thing. These colors coming out of the bucket were so vivid, so intense. I just absolutely loved them. Look at that pretty bucket inside. A little bit more to go. So I added some ribbons through the painting and I uh, just used up the paint that I had. Again, I have that tablecloth underneath, that plastic tablecloth. So I literally picked up the entire tablecloth, scrunched it up to where like it was a bundle of wet paint. And I just snipped the end of it and it went right back into the bowl for me. And I made this, this gray color, of course, because there's 100 different colors there. It's not going to be a bright, beautiful color. It was just a, a, you know, regular gray color, but I can use that for a base in the future. So now I'm just doing my tilting really quick here. And then I'm going to show you the final results, which I'm very, very happy with. It's just a good old fashioned acrylic pour like we used to do in the old days no cells no lacing just some really pretty paint flowing over a canvas you know i think i'm just gonna leave this the way it is it makes a beautiful two-piece set i kind of really like it and there are so many colors in this <laughs> so let's just take a scam over it here now, some of these colors are uh, metallics, so, you know, you're looking at it this way, but, you know, once the resin gets on and you see it in the daylight, like, these areas here have metallic in it, and, you know, I'm sure there's a ton of it everywhere else, like, right in this whole section, that's all metallic, so it's going to be really pretty. may not look like much now, but it's very uh, geodish to me. Geodi. And uh, that was a lot of fun, you know? Sometimes we just need to do these things where we just have some fun and we don't care about, you know, the outcome. And I, I find that a lot of times when you pour paint with that type of an attitude, you end up with something you really like. So this will continue to develop. You see, there's you know, cells developing, all different little weird objects. That looks like a pink candy corn almost. <laughs> and uh, it was just very stress relieving. That's what I was looking for. But anyway, let me show you this one over here. Some nice, just vibrant color flowing through the canvas. Doing its thing, a little pink dot. Maybe name this one the pink dot painting. <laughs> Very, very just elegant. No bold, like, lacing and just the same old, same old. Just some nice flowing color. Nice flowing color with a bright white light bouncing off the surface. <laughs> I don't know why, but this here, this area is reminding me of a set of lips with big teeth. <laughs> I think it's safe to say that we didn't really create mud here, did we? No, we didn't. 100 colors all mixed together in no particular order. I put browns and oranges together. It all worked out great. <laughs> I'm very shocked. Now, this area over here is not even mud. That's just the brown color with a little bit of pink going through it. Sorry, it's a very cloudy day here in Connecticut. No lighting is helping me. <laughs> the, sh the sun could shine down upon my house right now 
and it still wouldn't help. And we are done. I'm going to leave this exactly the way that it is. We achieved a 100 color pour without turning it into mud. We still have our pinks and our greens and our blues and our whites and our purples and our reds. And I just love it. So that is what's called an in the pot swirl in the soap world. You put the white in the pot and then you put your other soap, soap colors in and you blend them all together and you pour them into a mold and you create your bar of soap. Which, by the way, at the end of this video, I'm going to be showing you my latest batch of soap, which I did using the in the pot swirl technique. Also, I mentioned Secret Santa last week. Secret Santa has decided to stop at my channel this year again and offer one of you one of my paintings. So what I'm going to do in the next clip is show you that painting and tell you what you have to do to qualify to win it. So let me clean up this mess and then we'll jump on to the next mess. So here is the leftover paint from the table that I was able to recycle and I'll put it in a jar with a tight lid and use it in the future. Okay, it's time for Secret Santa Giveaway. One lucky viewer is going to win this painting that I made two weeks ago using a special blend of white paint to get the puffy cloudy effect. It looked like a winter wonderland when it was done, but here's the kicker. I've gone and done one more step to this painting, and now it looks like this. A beautiful white teal and silver glitter piece. It is so beautiful in person. So if you want a chance to win this painting, all you have to do is two things. Be a subscriber of this channel and leave a comment in the comments area about what you thought about today's video. Or you can just say hi to me. Just make sure you leave a comment and you're a subscriber. And I will be choosing one lucky winner during my December 31st video at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, along with the winner of the free soap for guessing what theme my Christmas tree is. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch last week's video and you will find out. So anyway, that's the deal, my friends. This beautiful painting can be yours. All you have to do is comment. And now, without further ado, let me introduce you to a real in the pot swirl cold process soap called Luxury Lavender. You know, I decided to show this little excerpt from my soap making journey here because somebody had asked me last, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, do I make real, real soap or do I make the kind where you just melt it down and color it and design it? And the answer is no. I make real, real soap. Like I blend oils along with lye and butters and all kinds of things that we dump into soap. But anyways, yes, I make real, real soap. <laughs> Although there is nothing wrong with making melt and pour soap. It's just, I want my bars to be really, really good for your skin. So this is a real in the pot swirl. You take your soap colors and dump them into the white soap and you give it a little swirl and pour it into the molds. Now my soap batter was a little thicker than I wanted it to be because it's so cold in my house, but it turned out beautiful. I had this theme in my head where I saw like this just really classy soap look that had crystals on top of it. So I poured it in the mold and then what I did was I took a spatula and created a little bit of a ledge um, to place some extra coarse salt on top. Extra coarse sea salt, I should say. 
So a lot of this, this will fall off when you use the bar. A lot of my soaps, the, the top, the decorations are just that. It's just to make it look pretty. But, you know, a lot of the, the salt will fall off. You could just knock it off and uh, use a really, really good bar of soap. And let me tell you something. This is such a good smelling soap. It's called Luxury Lavender. I added a little bit of eco-friendly biodegradable glitter just a little tiny bit to give those crystals a little bit of sparkle and here is what it looks like after it's cut it's just a really classy very nourishing for your skin bar of soap again i will be releasing the soaps in january and when that time comes i will tell you how to order Alrighty, my friends, that's it for today's video. I'm going to go deal with my head cold that I have going on. I love you all. Make sure you check out the description for information on classes and discounts on products. And until the next time, happy pouring.